Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brandon Sell, and with me today is a comedian, an actor, director, writer, uh, basically everything. Uh, Alain Gonzalez Moulet. Alain, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going pretty well. Thanks for having me. All right, awesome. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about like basically your career and stuff like that. Uh, so what got you interested in comedy, whether it's stand up or just like comedy stuff in general? Well, I've been doing comedy, I think, since I was like 12, 13 years old. My buddies was, were, were always in bands. So like in between sets, uh, they would say, just get on stage and just so we don't have any dead noise, just tell some jokes. So I started by doing that. Um, always just been inclined to comedy. You know, I see, I see life through a filter of comedy. You know, it's all just one big joke. I don't know, maybe if I took too much acid in college and now everything's just a fucking hysterical to me. <laughs> no, but... But 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 really, I I just I I've, I've always seen I've always seen life through a lens of comedy, you know, like even through through tragedy. There's always a joke in there somewhere, you know. There's always this harmonious balance that I think always ends with a laugh. So I've always just been inclined to it. Uh, what is it about uh, talking about like stage and stuff? What is it about because it, it's listed that you're a comedian? Uh, do you do stand up yep. work as well? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, stand up has been kind of in hiatus almost since March because of the whole COVID thing. I mean, right. um, the Miami Improv now has just recently started to acclimate people back in. Mm. Um, you know, I, uh, thanks to guys like uh, Cisco Duran for giving me opportunities to get back up there and get some time. You know, we're not a lot of places are giving time. So shout out to him, shout out to Cisco for giving me time on there and Miami Improv just like circulating things back in. So everyone knows that it's gonna be a, a, a process getting back to where we were. But um, as of right now, you know, we're trying to acclimate to the environment and trying to be as safe as possible, hosting stuff outside. So, yeah, I mean, this, the, the stand-up is still there. But, again, it's just – it's kind of taking a back seat with this whole thing. You know what I mean? Because mm. at this point, I'm going to be doing stand-up in a park like a thespian. You know mm. what I mean? Like 17th century colloquial jester out there. It's like, hey, where do you do stand-up? I'm like, <laughs> at the park. And they're like, oh, like where the homeless people are? Like, you're right there. Like, you know, when the guy cuts the grass with the scissors, that's where I'm at, you know? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to stand-up, uh, for you, is it, like, just kind of like, an, because you said that you view uh, the world through, like, this, this comedy lens. Sure. You, is it, like, just kind of an avenue for you to get your stuff off of uh, compared to, like, acting and writing? Is it just kind of that? Yeah, I think that um, it, 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 it definitely, like, translates into the acting and the screenwriting and just just be involved in creating something that we could like you know put together and play with but the stand-up in its own it's its own world you know like i can't i can't really compare that to anything mm -hmm. um for me why i do the stand-up is you know just so i could i could hear reactions of people from the crazy shit that i think of you know what i mean right. just 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 that feeling of just immediately dropping something, you know, and then getting that reaction back. There's nothing like it, you know, right. like, yeah, it's just, it's just this vibration of energy that I don't get anywhere else. So it's, it's, yeah, an avenue to pull off steam. It's an avenue to try out some material, you know what I mean? Because you got, you know, you got five minutes, usually, you know, five, 10, 15, like, depending on the gig, like, are these people going to like you or not? You know, it's not like a movie where it's like, oh, you know, give it 20 minutes, 15, 30. It's like, oh, now I'm already committed. I'm in. It's like you, you got five minutes either either you, either you did good or you didn't, you know? So it's this immediate satisfaction that you and get. There's no, and, and there's no rehearsal. There's no, it's just go out there and then. No, I, if you, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, the cra crazy part about it, you know, doing stand-up, you can ask a lot of stand-up comedians that, like, our, our rehearsal is, like, in the shower. You know, you're like a madman just by yourself saying, you know, it's just like, that time at my uncle's when I was 10 years old, it was like, oh, wait, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Like, you know what I mean? You're just <laughs> talking to yourself. So yeah, that's 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 the rehearsal, you know. Post like a movie, you 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 get takes, you get cuts, you know. Sometimes you wrote it or you sit down with the writers and the producers and you feel the general direction of what you want a scene to do or the feeling of the movie. You know, every night in stand up is different. You know what I mean? Like, you know, eighty percent of the jokes I say are off script. So it's just you got to just flow with the vibe of the day. You know. Okay, so you do a lot of crowd work uh, with your stuff, or is it just kind of off the top? Yeah, I mean a little bit of both. If there's if there's if there's if there's material in the crowd, you're gonna use it. You know what I mean? Like no one's safe. But yeah, I mean it definitely it, it, it all comes on the vibe. You know, so like if 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 I have a bunch of uh you know um 
Venezuelans in the crowd. I'm not going to go very heavy Hugo Chavez support jokes. Hmm. You know what I mean? Probably hmm. steer away from that. Or like, <laughs> you know, there, <laughs> there's a guy with a, with a make America great again hat. Like don't talk about nine 11 too much. <laughs> fair, <Yeah>. fair. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. This yeah. interview is well, I'm, I'm digging myself into a hole here. It's like what we got from this interview is that you support Hugo Chavez <laughs> and, you, and you enjoy 9-11. It's like I didn't say that at all. Well, that'll be the be best thing because then in the edit, what I'll do is that like I'll put like the stuff around you. I'll put like the Hugo Chavez stuff next to you. Put like the flag and stuff like that, and like give you a hat and stuff. Oh my God! Yeah, let's, let's really go going. all in. Better material, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. We'll get better material. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I saw that uh, on your on your bio uh, on on IMDb that you went to Coral Gables. Is that right? Yeah, Coral Gables Senior High. All right, how was it? It was great, man. Like, I, I, I had a great upbringing here. I mean, I love Miami. Coral Gables is a phenomenal school. I was in the IB program there. I thought, I think I got a great education. I had a better, probably better education in high school than I did in college. You know, don't let my mom hear that. But, I mean, it's probably true, you know. Um, it, was, it, was, it was great. It was a great upbringing. You know, I, was always, um, I was always a pretty studious kid. You know, like, I, like, I would never skip class and stuff. Um, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was always in sports. I was always, I was always like fairly good student you know what i mean um i enjoyed it i had a really good high school you know what i mean some some other kids are like i can't wait to get out of here and i'm like i don't want to leave <laughs> you know what i mean the real world sucks all right uh talking about that how was fsu fsu was a lot of fun i mean I'm, I'm i'm the only person that made it out of there with an, without an std <laughs> so <laughs> tell, tell a nasty and all that stuff so the movie yeah. is true Oh my God! There's a hole in every bathroom stall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, <laughs> all right fair oh. enough. We didn't, we didn't have that right. FAU, so all right, that's fair. No, no, in FAU you have like slots. It's not just a dirty, dirty hole. <laughs> like you put a quarter in. Oh man! All right. Yeah. FSU. What's up? No, FSU was fun, man. Yeah, it was good. Right, good. Cool. good. Good. Yeah, right. yeah. Good. Good university. All right. Um, so talking about uh, just now your career now and the stuff that you're working on. So can you talk to us about a line of unscripted? Can you talk to us about pitching it, about making the show, about all? Because you were telling me off, off camera how it's, been, how it's been rough, especially now, like getting that off the ground and just getting any yeah. traction going on it. So can you talk to us about that? Yeah. So what a line of scripted is, it's, it's, Technically, a, a reality TV series blended in with sketches. So when I go out into the street, it's completely unscripted. Like, I, I just interact with people how I'm feeling on that day, or maybe we have a central theme. You go off, talk to people, get a reaction. And then depending on the subject matter that I use, let's say, like, we're talking about attorneys to somebody, and, you know, she says something, and then I respond back, then that will cut in to a written sketch that ties everything together, you know? So like, for instance, I was, so I, if I bring up like an attorney, so I'll, I'll be on the street and then I ask somebody, what do you do? And she goes, oh, I'm an attorney. And then I look at her and I say, at law? And she's like, yeah, it's usually how it is. You're a fucking attorney at law, like no shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then that'll go into like a sketch in a courtroom. You know what I mean? Right. Like objection. And it's just like, sure, you're not wearing any pants. And I was just like, overruled. You know, and then that'll go into that written sketch and then it'll come back into the street. So that's why it's technically unscripted. You know what I mean? Because it's I'm, like, I'm it's getting... like a more it's like a more evolved version of like man of the street stuff and like the scoop show that, that you did uh, for a bit, would you say? Yeah, exactly. Like it's yeah. it's it's all growth it's all growth from that. You know, it's like think think Billy on the street meets Dave Chappelle show. Yeah. You know what I mean? So from that Billy on the street sketch, the interaction you get with people, that'll go into like a written Chappelle show skit. And you have material to work off from, from the actual people. And then you can just... Yeah. Kind of, yeah. They, are the, they are the material. You know what I mean? Like whatever they provide to me is what the sketch is going to be drawn up. Of, you know, so, so whatever I get out of the people. And everyone's different. So it's a show that never ends. You know, like you're always going to get a different reaction for someone. There's always going to be a different topic, you know, so um, it's just, it's sustainable. 
Right. And especially in Miami where like you have, like you said, a bunch of different people, then you're going to have yeah. like a bunch of different perspectives and stuff. Of course. Yeah. I mean, again, this is a melting pot. So you have, you have a, a multitude of different, of different, um, of different cultures and, 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 and different perceptions. It's like, it's just, just like you said, different viewpoints. So um, it's, it's definitely a playground of entertainment out here. You know what I mean? And I, and I can't wait to really get back up and running because right now, especially like, like I'm local, you know, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not like what you see on camera, like is the tip of the iceberg with me. You know what I mean? Like everyone might think like I'm always jumping out of a dumpster or I'm just this like visceral pig that you would see like ruining someone's lunch. Like that's not who I am, you know? And, and right now I just don't even feel it to be socially responsible to assault someone with a microphone. You know what I mean? Like running up to someone on the street, people just aren't open to it now, right. you know? Yeah. So that's why, you know, the show and the development within this year has kind of taken a real back seat because my, my, my audience who I interact with is literally all on the street. Like 90% of the show is me interacting with random people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, you want to talk about this? Please sign this waiver. You know, like there no no one wants to do that right now. So what's so what's it like uh, filming it? Because you're for, you're 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 not um, you're not in a set location, so you have to like move around and stuff. And there's the logistical issue of like of getting some of getting someone like, hey, can we talk to you about this? Like, so what's it like filming the show? Chaotic. Filming the show is absolutely chaotic when we're not filming like a, like a sketch, you know, when we, when we have, when we have a studio or, or, or a written sketch, you know what I mean? That, that, that goes way easier. You know, we're going off the script here. You know what I mean? Right. When we're filming on the street, it's a madhouse. You know, my, I, my, my cameraman, like you're getting a full workout with me. I'm sprinting, I'm jumping locations. And honestly, you got to have, you know, you got to have a lot of balls being my film woman or man, you know, cause women can have balls too. You know what I mean? Like you just like if, if if I'm walking into a bathroom, you're coming in with me. Like if there if there's if there's a door that says do not enter, you better believe I'm going in there, and you got to be ready to be behind me. So you, sure you can see me talking to someone there. Sure you can't be in here, and then my cameraman's like, we gotta go, and I'm like, I'm filming that. You know what I mean? It's like don't you stop rolling. So it's yeah, it's 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 insane. It's absolutely insane. I'm usually wearing a full suit, in 98 degree weather. So it's it's it's. It's brutal, man, but I love it. You know, I love it. It feels like it feels like I'm at I'm at I'm at war. It's awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, what do you like more about whether it's a line I'm scripted or just in general? Uh, what do you like more, acting, writing, or directing? Acting. Mm. Acting. You just, I uh, just do your stuff and just kind of get your personality out there. Yeah, I mean, I consider myself. Um, to lean more towards um, a method practice of acting because I have such a strong personality as it is just by myself that if I don't like completely succumb myself to the character, like you're not going to believe it because a line is going to peek out of there. Cause when I'm acting again, like I'm, I'm not a line, I'm, the, I'm whatever character you want me to be or whatever we're trying to say in the story. So I need to completely dive in to this character. And that's what I love. I love getting lost you know, with, within that process, especially because, you know, the whole artistic process, you know, I think everyone can, can agree in whatever art form you do that you get lost within it, you know, and then you're, 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 you, you're trying to find yourself or trying to find something within that. And with, and with acting, it's like, I peak on that. You know, that's when I really feel it's like I'm so hyper involved within the subject matter that it's just, it's, it's, it's a beautiful feeling for me, you know, just seeing that character come alive. So definitely acting. I guess for the the line of scripted, since you're using your name and it's kind, but it's not you. It's like this alternate version of you. I guess like I, I bring this up with all the stuff that I do, but because I'm a fan of it, it's like wrestling, where they where like you listen to interviews with guys like Steve Austin, for instance. He talks about how Steve Austin Stone Cold isn't him. It's just him like turned up to ten. So right, all of the right. dreams, even though even though you're you're a line it that's not a line it's like the extreme a line you know what i mean exactly it's mm. like it's like the shadow version of the peter pan mm. you know what i mean like that yeah. it's exactly that it's just like you little you you, you little rat scallion you little mischievous prick you know what i mean like it's that's exactly right 
it's a line turned up 120 degrees. You know, you know what I mean? Like the oven is just way hotter. You that's I think I think you put it perfectly. It's like it's 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 not an alter ego. It's just like you said, it's a hyper version of yourself. Does it feel good like to kind of to, to Yeah, it feels really good, man, because when I'm doing it, it's just like I don't give a you know, yeah. like it's 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 a time it's a time, you know, throughout throughout the structure in my life because I live a pretty structured life that I can just completely let go and just just literally say whatever the hell I want to say. That's why I don't have Twitter. I would get in too much trouble because I like my filter. It's it doesn't exist. So when I'm out there and I ask someone, it's like, oh, it's your birthday. And she goes, yeah. And I'm like, how old are you? She goes, 25. And I'm like, I would have said 38. You know what I mean? And they're like, piece of shit. You know, it's like, oh, you're like you don't say that like in a meeting with someone. You know, I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm late. I have to pick up my kid. And then you're just like, oh, you have a kid? And she goes, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it shows. It's like, oh, okay, that's extremely <laughs> rude, you know? Uh, all right, cool. Uh, all right, um, talking about a line of script, unscripted, is that your favorite project that you worked on? Or do you have other projects that you show to people or you're like, oh, man, I'm really proud that I did this? Um, the Align and Scripted work, I'm really proud of too, especially because it's such in the ground levels of it. And I feel mm -hmm. like there's a very high ceiling that I know when I get there, it's going to make a big splash because of how, again, like there's, it's, it's never ending subject material here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people, there's a, there's an unlimited people. Um, I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of the work that I did with 313 Films with David Juarez, um, a short film called The Game made it into the short film festival of, uh, of cons, uh, film festival. So I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of that team, 313. I mean, Tracy, I mean, Tracy Rohn, you know, when I met her a few years ago with Kingston Productions, you know, she, she gave me an opportunity to be in some of the films and we go kept in touch. So, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, I'm proud of all the work that went into like Jowska, even though I had a minor role in that, but still I thought it was a good film. I thought I had good direction. Um, what I'm doing right now also separating from that a bit, as I mentioned earlier off, off camera that um, I'm working with local businesses and just giving them free highlights of the business. Like I'm just going into to a, to a local small, small shop, what it is, you know, a, a bakery, some nonprofit, you know, look, I say a restaurant bar, it doesn't matter. And just giving them a, a free shot, like just being real. Just coming in here saying, hey, what's this business about? What, like, what do I need to get when I come here? Like, what are you guys known for? What makes you an institutional part of our community? just to spread, shed, shed light on that because I, you know, I'm, I come from a family of entrepreneurs, of small business owners, and I feel now it's, it's a very important thing that we, um, that we, the, that we try and, and, and help because the death of small business is coming and it's a very scary thing, you know, just to, you know, it's, 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 it, it hurts me to think one day that like you'll bet, buy everything from Amazon. Like that's, that's terrible. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it takes away character of your city. It, it takes away employment from, from, from people all around you. So, you know, small business is big business. Three out of every four businesses in the entire country is a small business. Hmm. So, you know, I've, I've been focusing my attention to that and I'm really proud of that. Uh, that's great. That's great that you're doing that, man. Uh, how, how's that been going? Like what's been the response? And stuff? Yeah. I mean, the response has been absolutely great. All the places that we've done it with, you know, we recently started it. Um, I was, I was working with uh, Lenny, uh, Lenny Lombardo, um, from and he's he's he founded uh, Miami Street. Uh, he's uh, he's an artist. Um, he got signed with um, Slightly Stupid Records, so you can check his stuff out too. Um, and um, him and me have been working, you know, just getting just boots on the ground, and and, and we, it's been received really well because it's just really real. You know, it's not it's not a pretentious Yelp review. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not here to review you. Like I'm I'm here to highlight you. You know, it's just like like you exist. If you do a job then don't come back to this place but like you know i'm just letting people know that it's it's here these right. places exist. so it's been received really 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 well you know um time constraints sometimes i'm sure that i'm sure that you can imagine you know getting the owners of the businesses to be there or the or the or the, or the manager that like is, is embedded within the business that can be sometimes challenging um because again everyone has a busy schedule besides that it's it's, it's gone really well i think it's made, I'm making a positive impact finding that perfect time to film where it's not overcrowded but like there's enough people where you're like hey there are people actually going into this place and then right like, right you know what i mean and also too like when i would go out to get content because it's not like i've tried even with the alignment script and stuff like that like 
which is a good thing, but people aren't really out like during, like during the day. Yeah. And again, and when people do go out, like they're going out to dinner or just a bar, you know what I mean? Like you don't want to ruin their night until like you pull up a clip of me, like jumping on a table going, I don't want to pay my bill. I don't want to pay my bill. You know? <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> it's also crap like for film logistics. Cause like that midday you get no lighting. And then right. it's like, and again, too many people. So you're like, okay, especially if you're like, like you're doing like your rogue uh, kind of renegade filmmaking where you're just like, hey, yeah, hey, let me go over here. Yeah. 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 yeah for sure. Mm. Uh, so what are some on the, on the, I guess, funner side, what are some things that you like to do aside from film and comedy? What are some things that you like to do? Uh, what are some things that you've been watching? Like what are some things you like to watch? Um, well, my dad just started in a snuff film, which I'm really proud of. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we I was, just like, I was like, all right, this interview's taking a different direction. Sure. <laughs> my, yeah, my girlfriend and I just filmed a snuff film last night. We rewatched that. Oh, uh, no, um, um, Human I like Centipede Part 2? Huh? Yeah, Human Centipede Part 2? Human Centipede Part 2, yeah. exactly. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh... I, I, I like to play a lot of music. Um, I, like to, I like to play guitar. You know what I mean? Like, I love to freestyle. Love to just, just, just be involved in music is just always dope. I have a lot of friends within the music industry, so that's always fun. It's just very therapeutic for me. Um, I like to draw sometimes with, like, dry erase markers and stuff. It's fun. I feel, I feel like I sound like a child. Like, I finger paint with them, my, my pinky sometimes. <laughs> you know, I, I use my caca to finger paint. <laughs> what did that guy just say? Yeah. I heard him say he finger paints with his caca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just a regular guy, man. You know what I mean? I throw the just, just love love watching movies. You know what I mean? Just just love hanging out. I love I love exercising too. You know, a lot of a lot a lot of working out. Um, I'm I'm proud that uh I'm an I'm an unregistered sex offender. You know, so that's been going good. You know. 30 years strong, you know, <laughs> haven't taught me yet. <laughs> oh man. When I, <laughs> when I edit this together and I try and figure out, should I cut this out or not? Um, I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> it's, still, it's still funny. Don't worry. More jokes uh, will come. Oh man. I'm trying it, to give you good stuff, like good, like five second pieces. Like I'm just like out of nowhere. <sighs> Plug it in on the on the Instagram. <laughs> plug it in on the Twitter. Oh man, check out this interview. Hey, what's this guy about? Ah, well, he's yeah, like, finger painting with. <laughs> <shit>. hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh Come check this guy out. Hey, you know we do shorts and then we talk to people who finger paint with. Shit. Hey, you know it's a little bit of everything. He's a modern day Da Vinci. He's a modern day Da Vinci. Um. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh oh yeah you got any uh talking about movies you got any favorite movies that uh that you've watched recently any favorite movies just like in general hmm man i love so many movies mm. one of my all-time favorite trash movies man is starship troopers i don't know if you remember that is it's that like a trash such, movie though it's it's like as far as listen to me that thing should have won an oscar you know what i mean personally okay. but you know, but you know what I mean by trash movies. It's like, mm. like Howard the Duck. You know what mm. I mean? Like, you remember that movie, Howard the Duck? I've that heard of it, but duck yeah. Face. A funny story about Howard the Duck. I had gotten a surgery on my knee. I think I was in like 10th grade in high school. Mm. Just got knee surgery. So I'm in bed. Like, I'm on like a Percocet. It's still killing me. And I'm like, it's hurting. And, my, and, my, and, and then my dad left work. And then my mom's leaving. And I'm like, mom, it still hurts. And she goes, here, take two more. And she gives me two more Percocets. And as I'm like slowly drifting off into this opioid high, Howard the Duck comes on and I'm like catatonic at this state like this. And then she's like leaving the door. And like, as she looks back, like she, she's leaving, she looks at me and she goes, okay, have fun. And I'm like, change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I had to watch, I had to watch Howard the Duck high as on Percocet, <laughs> and like, I couldn't even reach for the remote control. I'm like, oh no! Like when it started, I'm like, what's happening? Just gonna have nightmares Funny. of um, Howard the Duck, like as you get flashbacks. Of yeah, it. right. I'm like Howard the Duck sneaking into my room, and I'm like, no, no. It's funny. <laughs> You're watching Guardians of the Galaxy, and at, at the end, like, 
No, he's back because Howard the Duck shows up at the end. He does, right? Yes. That was Howard the Duck because that's a Marvel. That's a Marvel thing. Right. Dude, who the f- invented that guy? Same guy who invented the mask. Same guy who invented all of this weird '90s sh- that came out, like the. Um, Oh my god, like it's this it's the same dudes that made like the Scooby Doo movie that was like all like sexual. It was like Yeah, like, yeah. We're making a hot. PG Scooby Doo movie and you got like Daphne in like a short skirt. Like how is this stuff how's this stuff happening? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't I see that's see that's that that's a trigger for me. You know, I I I I, I can't watch it like that because then I might go jerk off somewhere. I swear to God. <laughs> I, 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 I triggered quickly and triggered quickly, you know. I was talking to my girlfriend about it. I was like talking to her and I was like I, I I have to stop like watching porn you know and I have to stop mm-hmm. like don't send me hypersexual things because like I, I get all weird I get I get weird I can't watch so that's why I don't watch Scooby-Doo a line is a proud no fapper yeah exactly dude no 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 <laughs> 20, 20, 20 no you gotta harness your sexual energy you, <laughs> harness, you know what I mean for oh, sure oh man hey um so, this is a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with you. This awesome. Is fun. Awesome. Hey, so now more like, I guess, serious questions, I guess. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. hey, what, uh, what are some of your uh, inspirations for whether it's comedy or acting? Yeah. What, what are some of those? Probably my biggest inspiration uh, has to be a guy like Robin Williams. Um, just he, he's, he's, the, he's the epitome of what an actor, comedian can be. You know, you know, guys like Jim Carrey that just absolutely break the mold, and I and I see a lot of myself within that. You know, like um, I I I I can get really serious. You know, I I'm, I I'm, I joke a lot, and I'm really funny, but but um, you know, I I get down to work, and I really and I really dive in. You know, if you give me a role, and I think people are going to start seeing it as I continue to emerge with within the industry, that um, I I I'm I have a good solid overall, like I'm a well-rounded individual. You know what I mean? Like I can shoot the three, I can handle the ball, I can play the post, you know? So um, guys, guys like that is what really just like has me saying like, you know, I, I can do this too, you know, because it's just, it's, they're just so great. Talking about ser- uh, serious stuff uh, when it comes to acting, what do you think about that when, uh, when you're cast in, I guess, non-comedic roles? What, what fascinates you about it? What, what gets you excited about that stuff? Well, um, I, I enjoy drama quite a bit, and um, I, I actually prefer to act in, in films that aren't funny. Um, it, it's, I, I like getting into these, these waves, because acting is just a bunch of waves, right? So you start, you start, you peak, you come down, you know what I mean? It's just these range, ranges of emotions and, you know, getting to this, this place of within a character of a certain of this feeling of whether it's, you know, like, um, being, being, being extremely joyful or, or extremely sad, being able to find that range is something that, that really captivates me, you know, like feeling it, like when I, when I'm, when I'm feeling it and the camera will see it and you see it, it's like, holy shit, this guy just lost his daughter. You know what I mean? It's like, I can see it in your eyes, you know? And that, for me, I love it because I know you're going to feel that because I'm literally feeling it. Mm. All right. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, what do you want to accomplish in your career? Like, what are some goals that you have, whether it's, like, a year from now or long-term goals? Like, what do you, what do you want to do with your career? Um, you know, definitely be in the entertainment industry. I, I, I do want to submerge myself more in, into acting and keep pursuing acting, you know, continue to build the, the continue to build the line and scripted and generally just be within the entertainment industry. Cause I feel like that's what I was born for. You know, like I, I could totally see myself having a, like a show on the food network. It's like the number one show in the country. And some over here busting balls and just eating ribs, you know, and it's just like, I, I could totally see myself doing that. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Just something that I'm, that I can genuinely be myself you know, whether, whether that's through my own production or someone's else and, um, and give people that, that sense of, um, that gratifying sense of like, wow, that was genuinely entertaining. Like, like I, like I, I did not waste my 20, 30 minutes of my time watching this because that guy just put a smile on my face. Like I really, really enjoyed that. And that, that's what makes me feel great, man. You know, just getting like a random 
DM in Instagram or like just saying like, hey, like I have no idea who you are, but I saw your video my friend sent me and I thought that was hilarious. Like you made my day. You know, that, that makes me feel so good. Or just having one person after a comedy show coming up to me and say, you were the funniest guy up there tonight. You made me laugh nonstop. That's like all the motivation I need. So if I can continue to do that in any aspect of my life within this industry, I'll be a very happy man. I think about that same thing about like not wasting people's time because like I'll watch stuff and I'll go like, oh man, like I bet everyone put like a lot of work into this and, and like they really worked on it, but damn, it just came out so badly. And I like, whenever I do like a video or whatever, like I write something, I think about like, oh, let me, you know, let me put myself into the audience and like, let me do something that they would like. And then at the same time, like one thing that I think about is like, what I want to do stuff for people like me, like maybe not like, not everyone's going to like what you're doing, what I'm doing, but right. at least people similar to us, similar vibes, sure. or like whatever, like at least they can like it or, or get into it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. You know, it's not wasting someone's time. And as long as you just have, and, and as long as you just have someone out there, I remember one of my friends, He's actually an architect, completely out of this, completely out of this industry. I was talking to him about something similar. And he goes, no matter what, just know if you enjoy what you're doing, there's going to be someone out there that also enjoys it. If you don't even like it, then probably other people won't like it either. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. as long as, as, as you did it and you feel fulfilled and, and you're getting a kick out of it and you enjoy it, there's someone out there for you. You know what I mean? There's always someone out there. Like an old fat man walking, slipping on a banana peel. Ooh, people are like, oh, that's funny. I thought that was funny. There's someone else who's going to think that's funny. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. All right, awesome. Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, any places where people can find your stuff or follow you or whatever? I know you don't have Twitter, but like anyone, any place that uh, people can like watch your stuff and support you. Yeah, um, um, I'm always on Instagram, uh, Align Unscripted. Um, I have a YouTube channel as well. Honestly, I'm not. I, I'm not even as as it, which which is which is a shame, right? Because like nowadays, it's almost that's where everything shifted towards. You know what I mean? Like, like either either you're like Instagram Instagram famous now, or like you're not type yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? And um, but um, yeah, I mean you can find that stuff online on Instagram, Align Unscripted, TikTok, Align Unscripted. You can go on YouTube as, 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 as well. And uh, hopefully one day shortly, you know, you'll, you'll, be seeing, you'll be seeing my work on a, on, a, on a streaming platform that everyone can enjoy on a daily basis. And um, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to see the direction that uh, we as a people are moving towards, you know, because this year has been a big one, to say the least. You know, there's a lot of stuff um, revolving around this year. And um, I think that um, we as people – you know, have gotten a little time to reflect on who we are and have gotten time to see the weight of our actions and, and really been able to adjust our sails accordingly to see where our ship is going to be steered, mm. you know? So um, there's a silver lining to everything. And um, I think that everything that's been going on, you have to find one, you know, like find, find your comedic lens, to look at, you know what I mean? So um, yeah. Yeah, I feel I, f I feel good and I feel optimistic, you know, for, for, for my future, for the industry's future, and I think for, like, you know, the future of all mankind. Align for President 2020. <laughs> all right, awesome. Uh, Align, thank you, for, thank you for joining me, man. Uh, you just uh, check, out, uh, check out Align stuff. Uh, it's great on, on YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, you know, thanks again for, for coming on, man. Thank you, Brandon. Really, I appreciate, appreciate the time, and I uh, hope you be well. Give me a call. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do good things. Thank you so much.